Welcome to the Black Belt Business Podcast. My name is Matthew Brenner, and today we're with the CEO and owner of Bowtie Social, Steve Cassano. He runs a digital marketing agency that started in the beauty industry and now has branched out into other industries like food and yoga studios, martial arts schools. So he's going to talk to us today about what businesses are doing right when it comes to digital marketing and what they're doing wrong and how we can best serve our businesses with best practices to get our word out there and bring in new customers. So Steve, thanks for coming on today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And first off, congratulations getting married in about a month and a half. Yeah, we are 46 days out right now. So we we have everything set for the most part. We still have to do like the whole floor plan and everything like that, but it's the home stretch. So we're very excited to have the party at this point. There's been a lot of buildup, so we're ready to go. <laughs> so I have a question about that. You're sure. the, you, you originated in your business with the beauty space. Yes. So is there extra pressure to make everything like super nice or like beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about Dude, that. Dude, yeah. Well, it's just like my brand, my personal brand, right? So like I, my first business was a men's fashion consultant, right? Um, you know, I used to be in cybersecurity. I quit that, didn't like it, and then started a men's fashion consulting business because that seems like the next logical step. <laughs> um, but I was just really into how someone's image and how they carry themselves translates into how they feel, right? How they perform in business, how they perform in their life, right? Usually comes from how you treat yourself and how you portray yourself. So having that background and everyone who's at this wedding understands that that's where I kind of come from in my history there's a lot of people that are like i'm so, i've had multiple people text me i'm so stoked for your suit for your wedding i don't know what it's going to be but i am looking forward to it and i'm like well thank goodness like i'm really stoked about my suit i get okay. to try it on for the first time tomorrow where'd you get it from damari damari in old okay. city so it's okay. um Is malcolm jenkins yeah it's full custom it's malcolm jenkins he owns damari uh i it was like my dream living around here that like, if I'm going to get married, I'm getting my suit at Damari. Mm. And so we went full custom for that and they've been great. So how much is a Damari suit? It ranges, to be honest. It starts at like 1900. Okay. Right. It can go as high as you want. Right. Right. I kept it on the lower end okay. because, you know, listen, I wanted the thing, but also I'm going fairly classic. So I'm not going too off the rails. Mm. Right. I really wanted to. I designed two suits, and then they told me the prices of both, and I was like, "We'll just keep classic." <laughs> what was the pr- what was the price of the other ones? It was over three. Okay, it was over. Three. Right, that's too much for me for a suit. It's, yeah, I'm not wearing tuxes every day, right? Yeah. So oh, it's like, a full tux. Okay. Well, it's a hybrid. Oh, okay. So um, there's a hybrid tux suit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're going suit jacket, tux pants, and I'm going boots instead of shoes. So we're we're kind of going wow. kind of crazy, okay. uh, but yeah, we're going non traditional. So it's a flannel. I can say this because by the time you know, yeah, no one, no one's gonna know. Yeah. But um, hopefully, my bride doesn't listen before. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're going like full, f- like a flannel green up top, not checkered, just like a textured wool, dark green. Um, I'm getting my logo, like the bow tie, you know, embroidered on the on the cuff. Heck yeah, outside. Um, we have a custom liner in there that's going to look really cool. And we're going classic black tux pants and some boots. It's going to look pretty good. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm really um, excited. I'm excited to see pictures of it. I know that the photography was really important to you. We we're talking about before we got on here. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what that looks like. Which is awesome because what we ended up doing actually was not looking for a wedding photographer. I looked for a concert photographer because mm-hmm. I don't want the extra pose to take four hours to like have this like perfect like forehead to forehead moment and like all these crazy little I want someone who has fun can capture movement because we're all about the party and so we I searched for a concert photographer that this guy actually randomly also does weddings on the side so I was like oh you're perfect how'd you get that idea did you saw that somewhere or you just thought no I just thought of it I was like you know what I want because there was a photographer that I really wanted to work with they were booked right but the reason why I love their photography is that all of their wedding photos look like everyone was having a good time and they were at a show. Mm. I wanted that feel and vibe. So I was like, mm. I'll just look up concert photographers. 
So then you have a live band as well because we have a hybrid DJ. Everything's with a hybrid, dude. We're I like having food and not food at the same we're time. We're having <laughs> this kind of food, mocktails, and, yeah. and regular cocktails. You're right, exactly. Yes. <laughs> a little bit of alcohol, dude. We gotta have a little bit of everything, okay. right? It's like you get the most out of all of it, right? But uh, yeah, so we're doing a DJ and a drummer, actually. So it'll be like a little bit of both. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, so now that you're branching out, so you started in the beauty industry. Yeah, 100%. Right? And like, what do you do for these uh, salons and companies that you work for exactly? Yeah, so we grew up in what's called the salon suite industry. It's kind of like we works, but for beauty pros. So hairstylists and estheticians and massage therapists have specific requirements within the state that they have to meet for the places that they're working. So they have to have like a sink, they have to have a wash bowl for hair and things like that. Um, that's not standard obviously in a WeWork or anything like that. So that's why these places exist. They also have to be inspected differently. Mm -hmm. So it's a fairly small niche that's exploding. We randomly fell into it. Um, and then, so what we help them do is we work for the building. So we help attract salon pros, right? So hairstylists, lash, artists, nail techs, that kind of thing, to these places so they could start their own businesses, right? Because they're basically incubators in a way, but these people stay for longer periods of time. It's not a short-term stay like it would be potentially for an incubator program. Hmm. Um, and the reason for that is if you want to buy a commercial space somewhere, you want to lease a commercial space, you have to put down, you know, six figures, right? Or you have to commit to a six-figure lease, you know, year one, and if you don't have a giant book of hundreds of people, there's no way you're going to get a bank to sign off on that loan. Traditionally, it just doesn't happen. Um, or you have to find a personal guarantor, which not everybody has. So what these folks do is they offer you a smaller space. It's like 100 square feet to 150 to 180 square feet with all the furnishings that you need. And then you get to kind of set up your own salon. You get to decorate it how you want, run it how you want, play whatever music you want, offer whatever services you want. So what we do is we work with them to figure out what's the best way to attract these people into this space. The folks that are high performers in their regular traditional salon that maybe have a book big enough that can support them out on their own so that they can then make more money. Because the way that the salon industry works for those who don't know, which I'm assuming most people don't, is that you, as a service provider in a traditional salon, you're only making part of what the fee is, right? Some Salons take 40, 50% of that fee when they're just running the admin. Is that similar to like a barber? Like a barber, you kind of pay for the chair, similar yeah. for a salon? Yeah, similar similar kind of style you can. Um, you know, some states' chair rentals are legal, which is kind of interesting. Like Pennsylvania, you can't really rent a chair unless you have a barber license. You can't rent a chair as a salon or a hairstylist, hmm. which is a cosmetology license, which is different. Someone can fact check me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case because I've seen barbershops do that and no salon can do that. Hmm. So it's a little funky, a lot of real weird rules. But, you know, for us, it's just offering an opportunity for people to succeed on their own, right? Do things the way that they want to do it. Um, but really the biggest trick is finding out ways to market to those folks in a way that speaks to who they are, right? And where they want to be. And that's that's the biggest thing, mm -hmm. right? And that's the that's the core part for marketing on our end is don't sell them the space, sell them what the space can give them, mm. right? Yeah, don't sell the flight, sell the vacation. Right, Yeah. exactly. So like for, in your case, right, with Karate Studios, you're not selling, you know, hey, you're gonna learn how to punch and kick, right? You're learning self-discipline, you're learning self-confidence, you're <laughs> learning how to take direction and learn in a structured environment, right? That can help you do that in other facets of life, right? So when you're marketing, it's not, hey, get your kid out of your house. It's let your kid thrive in an environment where they'll learn discipline, they'll learn how to work with others, they'll learn how to defend themselves, but then also feel confident in their ability to do those things, right? That's what you're selling. Yeah, and I think like there's this feeling when it comes to selling, especially for people who don't have experience in it. Yeah. But it has to be like sleazy or grimy or like they think like used car sales. Oh, dude. Yeah. But it's really like the exact opposite where if like if you encounter a really good salesperson, they just make you feel heard. Yep. And they make you feel comfortable and that you're gonna be a problem to their solutions or they're gonna take you from Hell Island to Heaven Island. Yeah. Right. 
So anytime we are training sales staff, we're like, hey, this might feel uncomfortable for you, but remember, you're here to help this person right. and point them in the right direction. And if, 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 if we can help them, then we don't do it. And that's it. And it's okay. If anything, that increases our reputation and makes us look better. Sometimes we'll even like take things away. Uh, like for instance, I always tell people when I do sales calls or the consulting side of my of my company, I'll say like, uh, hey, I'm going to go over today how everything works. I'm going to explain kind of like A to Z. Um, and if you feel like this is a good fit, then we'll move forward. If not, that's totally okay. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I think a lot of times people can come off as like high pressure. Right. And I never want to come off it that way. Uh, but I just want to make sure that we're a really good fit before we move forward. And that's most important. They say, okay, cool. And then they can let their guard down. Like, okay, now we could have an open conversation and not like, oh, I don't want to say this to this car salesman because they might say this and then I'm trapped and then, you know what I'm talking about? It's so funny because I do the same exact thing. Would you like to have a conversation to make sure that we're a good fit for your business, right? We have to be a good fit for you and you have to be a good fit for us, right? It's got to be a relationship. In a service business, that's absolutely true, right? Regardless of what you're doing or how you're serving, you're fixing someone's problem and they're trusting you. So you got to build trust from the get. The best way to build trust from the get is not building up walls or a situation where they have to go on their heels or be defensive because you're selling so hard. Let them talk themselves into it. Right? Exactly. <laughs> like, not to talk about sales, right? I know we're kind of here to talk about marketing, but from the sales side, right? Like ask them questions is my big thing. The more questions you ask, the more they're going to feel like they're being heard. At the end of the day, that's what everybody wants. Oh, yeah. Right? If you're the one doing all the talking and – at the end of it, they're like, okay, that sounds cool. Yeah, I'll talk to you later then. And then you end the call. It's like, oh, man, I crushed it. I told them everything that we needed to do. I told them all of the proof points that we have. And then, you know, but what are the, what's their problem? What is the actual problem that you're solving? Because right. for, for me in marketing, right, it's rarely that they don't know how to market. They they can, right? They're just not doing it in the right way or they're thinking about it in in a way that maybe isn't serving them best, right? Or their bigger problem is they're targeting the wrong people, but mm. you can't know what their actual root cause of the problem is or why they're not getting clients in the door until you talk to them about it, right? Mm. Tell me about your business. Beautifully open-ended question. When'd you start? Why'd you start? Why are you still doing it, right? And then you get to the root of, okay, so you're in it for the right reasons. You're trying really hard. It's not working because you were you heard some piece of advice somewhere down the line that doesn't actually apply to you, right? Is typically what ends up happening. Or they think it's a build it and they will come kind of situation, or they were sold that at some point, and it is not that. Mm, it's never that. It's I don't never know anyone that. that's ever had that. I mean, even us, we have a reputation in the community. Uh, or at least, you know, we have 30 plus locations, martial arts schools. Right. If you go to a new community, they don't know us there. They don't know me there. It's literally, it's like almost like starting all over. Yeah, they can yeah. Google us for sure. But it's kind of like starting from the beginning. I have to, I have to build trust in the, in the community. And so they, how do you do that for your business? Yeah, for, I'll start with like martial arts schools sure. and then I'll talk about consulting. Yeah. So for martial arts schools, we do it through building organic relationships not through digital marketing, but through where all of our members hang out, which is for us, like, the, you know, the, they could talk about the watering holes of your customers, where your right. customers go and hang out. Most of our customers are kids and families. So for us, like, the most important thing is creating a relationship with local schools okay. and local daycares and local family-friendly businesses. Got it. So, for instance, we're launching a school right now up in uh, Westchester, PA. Okay, it's my newest one. Yeah. And... I want to go in there and I'm going to offer free programs, to the daycares, to the schools, because if we are where the education actually happens, then they see us in, in their daycare when they're in like, you know, kindergarten or, right. or you know, and then after that first grade, second grade, now we're in their elementary school, then we're in their middle school and they see us all those years. So even if like they don't come to us, you know, year when they're kindergarten, some of them will, but they will come in the, the second year or third year. So it's like the accumulation. And right. if I, and it's almost like when we do something in the school or daycare, it's almost like they're sponsoring us. It's almost like they're saying, hey, this place is great. We're having them here, right? And especially the higher end daycares, like, and for us, that's like Goddard, yep. right? Higher end, like we just set up a program with them, which is awesome. 
Um, and if we can get in like those ones, then we go to the other daycares and we use proof, um, we use social proof and say, hey, we just set up a program with the local Goddard in the area. And I feel like um, I felt bad because we didn't get to you guys yet. Almost, And then they're like, oh my God, yeah, you didn't get to me. And it's like, like almost like, um, almost like, oh, don't, don't skip out on me. Like right. they do. Like they don't want to miss us. out. Yeah, right? yeah. Nobody wants to miss out. So we'll create programs with them. We'll do it for free where it's an easy sell. And for them, it's really good because they get to have free martial arts programming. And for us, it's good because, you know, a percentage of those people, they're going to come and join our school. And then we become like the go-to school because we're at their school, we're at their daycare, we're at the, the local place, like the Mathnasium or the Kumon, uh, yeah. right? Or the, the the family clothing store like, has our flyers. I was going to say, what beyond education? Where like, where do you guys go outside of that, right? Are you guys at like the local pools too? Or like what other businesses besides, obviously like, Daycare makes a ton of sense, right? Everyone probably goes there. But then for the folks that maybe get watched at home, right? Don't go to a daycare kind of situation. How do you reach those folks? Yeah, it's just like anything else. We'll also run Facebook ads. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously Google AdWords, stuff like that. For those others, we'll just make sure we're kind of at everything. Like if there's a community, if there's a block party, we'll be at the block party. If there's any community right. event, we're there. Um, we'll do every door direct mail or just flyer, right? Like. Okay. As old school as it is, sometimes it's nice to just put on headphones and walk around and just like fly for a couple hours, like put it directly on people's yeah. behind their mailbox, not in the mailbox, that'll get you arrested. Yeah, right. <laughs> but behind the mailbox. Uh, and I'd say that's how we get our, our, our name out there. For for consulting, Yeah. honestly, this has been the best thing. Really? Uh, the podcast. Yeah. Very cool. Because now when people come in the door, instead of me trying to like sell them right away and like go through the whole scripting or whatever, I'll say, what do you, you know? What is it you want? And they'll say, it, it might be through Messenger or Instagram or something. Right. And they'll say, oh, I really want to um, build more locations, or I really want to be better at digital marketing. Instead of me just selling them right away, I'll just send them this episode and say, right. hey, this episode is really going to help you. I talked to blah 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 blah, and I think I think it'll be really helpful for you. And then they'll come to me and they'll just say, hey, that like I loved it. That was awesome. Um, you know, I subscribed, and then like later they'll be like. Uh, hey, how can I how can I sign up? And then it's like I don't right. have to do the whole sales process. Yeah, you don't have to do the whole the social proof thing. Yeah, right. I mean, social proof is one of the biggest and best, most effective ways to build trust in any market, regardless of what industry you're in. Right, because if someone else has done it and they found success, then why can't you? Right, that's the biggest thing. Now it's hard to do that when you've started from zero. Yeah. Right. Then you can't use that. You have to do like here are my accolades. Here's what I've done, right? You have to kind of build up that reasons why to trust me versus don't trust me, trust my customers, mm. right? Trust your customers is like the coolest and best way to do it because it's just reviews. I mean, like reviews are huge, right? It's, it's all social proof. If you can build a marketing campaign off of social proof alone, it's going to do way better than if you do it any way else. Right, right? yeah. A flyer is great for awareness, Social proof is good for trust building, and you have to build trust before you get someone's dollar, mm. right? That's the easiest way to someone else's dollar is is through trust. How do you build that? That's exactly the right way to do it. So it's very cool that you go to the the partnering vendors, right? Who else serves my clients? That's huge. Yeah, and we'll try to help them. Not try. We do help them as well. Right. Like, for instance, if it's a mathnasium, right? right. So that means that parent invests extra money besides school and they might even send their kids to private school but they're investing extra money for their child's education it's very important to them oh yeah that's the same type of parent that's going to invest extra money for martial arts classes that yeah. are between 200 and 300 bucks a month and and it's the exact type of customer you want someone right. who spends extra money for a goddard school as opposed to like maybe a local one it's not as expensive right they're gonna be the people we want it's not gonna be as big of a financial decision now we do get people I mean, we've had people come become students who take the bus, yeah. right? Or like, hey, we canceled our cable subscription because this is so important to us. We feel like we don't need cable, but this this is more important. Wow. Which is amazing. Like when that happens, I'm like, bless your soul. You're like the greatest person ever. Yeah. And they love it and they're happy to do it. So it doesn't have to be necessarily like high end. You have to come from, a, it has to be in a high income neighborhood. But if we can go to that mathnasium and say like, hey, um, if can you give us like a flyer or some sort of discount or coupon that we can give to our new members when they join? Because that way it'll help you guys bring new members. They're like, oh, yeah, great. And usually we'll try to find a way to help them first right. before we even ask anything, right? Give, give, give. Like um, yep. Gary V says jab, 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 hook, Yep. right? 
So yeah, for, for Mathnasium or anything that's similar. So how would you do that? Like if you're going to go to a, like a WeWork situation, you want to get filled with, with beauticians or. Yeah. So the way that we kind of work that side of things is um, like for us right now. So finding other people that serve our customer base, right? So we partner with like the largest tech provider in the salon suite space. So they are like providing software. Yeah. Okay. So they do what's called a suite management system. So it's basically like an apartment rental kind of back end software where they're collecting rent, they're keeping track of who's there, they're farming leads, all that kind of fun stuff. But it's made specifically for this industry because there's a lot of nuance to it. Uh, we're their only marketing partner in the space. So like that's how we started to grow pretty significantly. How did you end up partnering with them? I got introduced to the CEO randomly through one of our clients that. I randomly landed um, through like traditional outreach with okay. like social media and stuff like that. Um, so you targeted them or it no. just kind of happened? So I randomly, you know, this person kind of reached out through LinkedIn and I was like kind of really attacking because they were local and I really wanted to get them on our books kind of thing. And then she's like, okay, you got to talk to this guy, Eric. He's the CEO of this company. You guys would get along really well, blah, blah, blah. And so after like six months of going back and forth, he's like, all right, we're going to get you to be our only marketing partner. We've had one in the before. We had to cut it off. They weren't very good. I'm like, listen, we can do it. I promise you can do it. Our heart's in it. This is where we want to be. I'm like, all right, cool. And since then, it's like, okay, well, we're vouched for by the only other major player in the market right now. Mm. So we get that social proof mm. from someone else saying, you know, these guys, we get vouched for. How do you use that social proof? Like, okay, you work with them. Is that on your website? Is it, do you send out? Yeah, money? it's on our website. We actually now co-sponsor a newsletter for all of their clients Ooh, right now. Nice. So we create the content with them. So there's like an update on like the management software platform, but then there's a trending like article on there that we'll write of like, here's what's happening in the salon suite space this month. Also, here's a marketing tip that we think you should know about. And if you don't know how to do this, hit us up kind of vibe. Yeah. That plus like the fun stuff. So like we do like a little trivia in there. We do like beauty stocks as a whole. Because do you write those articles yourself? I do write them myself because I need to know it anyway, right? Like if I'm going to lead my company in this space and we're the biggest player in that space from a marketing company perspective, like we're the only ones, we're the biggest ones that are specializing in it. There's only two others. They're kind of small. Um, but if I'm going to stay ahead, right, that's how I keep my finger on the pulse as if I'm the one that's writing them. Mm. Do you right. use ChatGPT to help you or? I have in the past, right? It's a great outline tool, Yeah, I would say, especially for like, if anyone's trying to create content on their own, right, for whatever business you're running, it's a, an amazing outline tool. Can it write as good as a human? Maybe not, right? Um, not yet. Not yet. It's getting better every day, which is awesome. But for us, we use it as an outlining tool. We use it as a starter. And then we edit heavily so that we get from like zero to one. We don't take it from one to 100, right? It can't go zero to 100 yet in terms of percentage. But it can get something on the page, can get you started, and get the gears turning of like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot about this thing. It must be online a ton because it's been processed by this AI engine, mm. right? So we, we definitely do that to at least start it. And then I also use it to edit mm. at the end. So I'm like, check this for grammar. Cause That's I, a good idea. I don't do that. I have Grammarly, which helps a ton, but for like run on sentences and structure and stuff like that, you want everything, especially online from digital marketing to be shorter sentences mm -hmm. so that people can process it faster. It also reads faster mm -hmm. and everybody wants their time back. So I'll throw it in the chat GPT and say, like, make these sentences short and readable um, and check it for grammar and tone mm -hmm. consistency. Those are great tips. I don't do any of that. I just wait yeah. for my sister to yell at me. Say, hey, use the word <laughs> wrong there. I'm like, God damn it. Again? I, yeah. Why are there so many? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, theirs, I'm pretty good at. The ones I'm bad at is like, and I still don't really get it, is like when you say like Jake and I or Jake and me, and there's one of them you say I, and one of them you say me. Yeah. But I forget which one is which. I never get it correct. Yeah. If you take the other person out, it should read the same. Give me an example. So like um, Jake and I went to the store. If you take Jake and out, it's just, I went to the store. Okay. Right? I think that's I think that's the main thing, like okay. if you take them out. Right? Okay, that's a good tip. Do you want to go to the store with Jake and me? Do you want to go to the store with me? Okay. Right. If you take them out, 
it should be this like the correct usage. You just changed my life. You're welcome. I'm here to help. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we got you on the podcast for, for grammar help. Yeah, that's right. Like, I'm going to be the grammar guy now. <laughs> it's, the world's going to end before that, <laughs> if that happens. So do you track with this company, like which leads come from them or which come oh, from Oh, for them? sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what percentage of leads do you think you get from that partnership as opposed to? Well, yeah. we just formalized it and like made it known in June. Actually, it's been, so it's pretty this, new. We're, we're filming this in August right now, so right. it's only been like two months. It's only been two months, but we've gotten probably 12 leads from them, which okay. for us is big, right? Like, yeah, we're not in a, like for our business, we're not in a business where like we're getting 20 leads a month, right? We're getting like six, right? And that's a great month uh, because there aren't a million of these salon suites out there, at least for like that section of our right. business, right? With these guys, it helps a ton because, again, we get vouched for. But we, I track everything. I automate as much as possible, right? We have, we use a CRM uh, called HubSpot, which a bunch of people use, mostly because you can just trigger and automate the hell out of that thing, right? So we also do a lot of um, lead gen type of, or lead magnet type of uh, deliverables, so like PDFs that people want to download and things like that, which I find really helpful because they're going looking for information. We're offering that information for free, but you have to give me your information first so that sure. we can kind of contact you. So these are four salon suites. Yep, four yeah. salon suites specifically. We also do stuff for like the broader market of like here are some standard like really good social media marketing tips, that kind of thing that you can go and download and, and do the whole thing and try to work it on your, work on it yourself. The best – mostly because we understand like it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It's a full-time job. Mm -hmm. Like – our clients don't get one person that's assigned to them. They get three because there's so many parts of it, right? Like content creation is a big thing. Account management is a big thing. It's like, okay, let's identify all your competitors in the area. Let's do hashtag research over and over again. Let's see what the trends are. And then we have to make sure that the content is reflective of that. And then there's engagement, right, which is huge that no one pays enough attention to. They're like, oh, I should like things or like I should follow people. Yes, you should, but you should also be engaging with your community. To your point, right? You're going out there door to door, knocking on doors, throwing up flyers, going to the community watering holes and engaging with people, talking one on one. You can do that digitally, but nobody does it to the fe to the point where it's like effective, right? So everyone goes and especially from a business account, it's all right, I'm gonna go follow all these people. And then maybe one out of ten follows back, right? If you engage them like a actual human being would. You go to their profile, you look at the first few posts, right? You look at the media and the caption and respond in a comment that actually shows that you're paying attention. And then you like a couple more and then you hit the follow button. On their end, it looks like you actually engage with them on a natural kind of human to human level, the way that it probably should work, right? I became aware of you. I like what you're doing. I'm gonna contribute to that and now I'm gonna follow you for more, right? That's the natural order of things when you're like genuinely interested. Mm. That's what we mimic. Well, we don't mimic it because we actually do it, right? But we find that doing that effectively is what creates the community. We become a good citizen of the community, right? Mm. So that we're engaging with the people, not just like within the beauty space, right? But for all of our clients that we have, whatever type of industry that they're in, we're looking at it as a holistic endeavor because the account that's a trendsetter, that's engaged with everyone, right? Those are the ones that become fruitful and more valuable at the end of the day and become an asset to your business rather than just a time suck, mm. right? Because everyone's going to be looking on Instagram now as like a proof point for their decision making. Like they're going to look you up on Google. They're going to look at your Instagram. Those are like the two big research points. The first two on average for most people. Are Google and Instagram. Hmm. Yeah because they're the most widely used, right? So even if it's a product, right? Product or service. So if you're not on one, it's like, oh, they don't have an Instagram. Are they, how real are they? Yeah. Right? I bought this like device on an Instagram ad mm -hmm. and it literally hit every pain point I had. It was like my car's older yeah. and it was like, you can have Apple CarPlay in your car and like, and like, so you I don't have to exactly hold your phone. As, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. And it was like, what because my car is older, but it works totally fine. It's just a screen that's like, I just want a nicer interface, which had an Apple CarPlay. That's all I wanted. Sure. And it was like everything I wanted. It was like a hundred bucks. Like, oh, amazing. And I just bought it. Like I, 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 um, 
I buy like I sell. Like I just yeah. like yeah, you go my in. Some good. I'm like <laughs> great, awesome. Like sometimes like I'll be, you know, like wanting to buy something, and someone's giving me the wholesale spiel, and I'm, I'm like, stop, yeah. stop, stop. I already want it. Just here's my card. Stop wasting let, your breath. Yeah. Let me buy it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Like, don't don't even talk to me anymore. So, yeah, I bought this thing. Then I I checked out their website afterwards, like because I was like, it didn't ship for like two weeks, and I was like, oh my god, am I getting this thing? And then I checked the website, and it was like the about section it was like three three letters F F F. Like clearly someone just like filled in like whatever. Oh my god! And I'm like, oh no, I think I got scammed. And then I like searched on YouTube. Then I searched on Instagram. Then I searched, and I couldn't find anyone's like review. And I'm like, oh, I'm screwed. Uh, but it did come, like a week okay. or two later. I got it. Works pretty well, I would say. All right. Um, the only mm. thing is, I'm pretty sure China is dealing all my information I was going to say, so all directly. your data is in Oh, a hundred percent. Like, so if funny. my phone connects to it, there's no, <laughs> they just get everything. For some reason, all of your, like, location services pop on for, like, apps that you've never downloaded before. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> My so, news are everywhere. Yeah, your t- <laughs> you have a Tebo app now that you didn't download. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, I mean, that's the whole point, right? Like. When people are sold something on Instagram, a lot of folks, not everyone, right? A lot of folks will check out the the profile. Oh, I usually do. This ad was so good. I was like, oh my right. God. Oh, <laughs> I know exactly the one you're talking about. I'm like, yeah, if I did, if I needed this, this would this would get me. They, yeah. they crushed this ad. Yeah. This, this ad's really good. But, you know, it's again, checking that, especially if, if it's over a certain price point, right? You're going to do more research. Yeah. And so like what we normally sell are, Again, full year leases to these salon suites, or at least that's what we kind of grew up doing in the business. And they're anywhere from like $27,000 a year to $50,000 a year worth for these folks. So they're doing their research, right? Their consideration time's like three to five months. It's like buying a car. Mm -hmm. So you gotta build up trust pretty quickly, or at least pretty intently for them to kind of like make that decision. And so that's why when, when we're going through and there's Google ads there and we're doing Facebook ads and the profile has to be good because wherever they're searching for this type of business, we want to make sure they're there, that the messaging is consistent. And then where they land to give their information, whether that's on the website or on Facebook or Instagram itself, it feels comfortable because the biggest thing, and this is for everyone, right, is people are afraid of what they don't understand. They have a hard time building trust with something that they don't get entirely. So educating them on what to expect, on what the steps are after their information is being given, right, very clearly breaks down those barriers to entry so that they feel more comfortable giving their information. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, hey, give us your information, we'll get back to you. It's like, well, no, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna give us your information, we're gonna take that. We're gonna reach back out to you both via email and via text message just in case you like one or the other. And then what we're gonna do is work to find a time that works well with you to come in and take a tour, right? Come check out the space, see if it's for you, no pressure. We're gonna give you you know, a bunch of material that you can take home and, and look over. We'll give you details on pricing. And then you get to make your decision. You can make the decision on the day if you want, or you can take a couple of days to do it. That's how it works, right? So that way it's like, okay, I know what I'm getting into, right? For you, it'd be like, you want to sign your kid up, come in for, you know, a one-on-one brief session where we'll tour you around the gym, right? Or the mat. And we'll we'll dive into what you can expect to learn, what time classes are, all that kind of fun stuff, right? We'll go through all those details. At the end of it, you can actually join a class if you want to, right? We'll give you one for free. And then you can go on your merry way and let us know if you want to join, mm. right? That way you get the whole like, oh, so I'm not going to get hard sold, or if I am going to get sold, I know where that's happening. So that way I don't have to have my guard up the entire time. Mm. It allows them to kind of get immersed in whatever environment they're getting into, and then they can build trust once their guard's down. right? But you're taking away the fear because they now understand. That's the biggest thing for us. So we try to do that digitally and then translate that into the physical realm with our clients and educating our clients on, this is how we're advertising that you're doing this. Right, we'll work with you to make sure that they match. But as long as you stick to this and you don't throw them any curveballs, right, they're gonna have a better time. Yeah, it sounds like you're just in a sense 
doing a really good job of pre-framing and just setting expectations. Mm, yeah, like, that's one hundred percent. Here's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, and for us, one of the things that we struggle with with our students is, especially in the younger side, like three and four year olds. Yeah, that's when age we start. It's like it's difficult to teach a kid that age group. I was gonna say, I don't know how you even get them to. Mm -hmm look at you long enough to teach them right <laughs> yeah we're, we're pretty good at it and some some three-year-olds are, are better than others for sure oh, usually yeah. girls are better uh they'll usually pay attention better or longer sure but like one of the things we have to train our instructors on and we tell them over and over again is like hey when you have a new member that comes in and the process that you mentioned of like uh telling them what the expectations are um i think we do a lot of what you said but there's some things you said that i think we're missing so that was a really good tip sure um so like, you know, we'll, we'll say, hey, you'll come to a trial. It's three lessons in a uniform. The first lesson will be private. He'll learn everything he needs to know to get in class to feel comfortable. After that, we'll go over the schedule, memberships. Very cool. That way you can decide what works best for you. Kind That's of awesome. Do. Yeah. yeah. So it's real simple. It's just a sentence. I'm right? assuming the parents are there the whole time, right? Parents are there. Yeah. Okay. We actually require both parents to be there if it's a two-parent household because cool. otherwise we'll hear the objection of oh that's just all great but i want to talk to my husband or i want to talk to my wife that's smart and it takes longer forever so we'll just say like uh hey it's company policy both parents are present and that way you can decide what works best for you and as a family um and if they say one person comes in and not the other we'll say oh no worries next time when dad comes in or mom comes in we'll go over everything with you and we'll schedule a time for both them if they say like I oh, know it's no big deal, but oh, we want we feel like it's always best when we're all on the same page. We need both decision yeah. makers in the room, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's hard to do sometimes, but and like if they pull, keep on pushing, sometimes yeah. I'm like, oh, dad's not going to care. Like, if I like it, he'll just be it'll be fine. Or mom's not going to care. Then we'll move forward. Right. But a lot of times, like what will happen is either a I will go over it and I'll still say I want to talk to my husband or wife, and it's like why did I just waste all my time? Or B they'll say uh, they'll they'll enroll. And then mm -hmm. they'll go home, they'll tell their husband or wife, and they'll say, wait, what? You signed up for what? And How it much costs was it? What? Yeah. yeah. And then they, they call us or text us, we're like, oh, God. So yeah. it's just easier to just, just get it all done in one spot. That's really smart. Um, That's a really great way to do it. Now, yeah. is that something that you came up with, or is that just like standard practice for? Um, not me personally. I would say like standard practice for action karate. Um, yeah. I'm sure my brother or his business partner at some point – Kind of just yeah, went through that thing. yeah, or went yeah. through some training that taught us how to do it. Um, but I mean, I'm sure if you're talking to uh, someone who wants to open a salon, you ask a similar question about yeah, decision I mean, it's, makers. It's always that, right? The the biggest thing that we hear all the time is, um, oh, my financial backer, I have to like go bring this information to them. It's like, well, so do you find that out early, or do you find that out? So later? we don't run the tours, right? Since we're not in the business, right? Our job is to get them leads and yeah, to pass them it. off, right? Okay. And then I. I play the consultant of like, listen, I've been doing this a long time. I understand what's going to work probably better than others for most people, right? And so that's when I'm like, if they're going to book, make sure that everyone's there, right? If they're going to book a tour, make sure that everyone's present that needs to be present. Now, a lot of these folks are like, no, this is my salon. I'm going to do it. And then it turns out that, well, no, you're getting help from somebody else to put down like the deposit, right? Which isn't extreme like extreme in any fashion but some people need the help and that's yeah. fine also because they need to get like all the stuff to start up their salon it's not just a room they have to do all the other things so that's where i think a lot of people aren't good within the salon suite space is making sure that everyone's present that's why i really like that you guys do that i mean it's a little bit easier when it's like parents for a kid because then it's coming yeah. over a kid where it's like one person's kind of finding a way to go out on their own and taking this giant risk. And the other one's like, I'll help you out if you need to. And then there's like this weird, like tension, it feels like from, yeah. from afar. Right. And yeah. it's not always like that. It's just sometimes you can definitely tell based on the conversation that you've had. Oh, you didn't actually fully explain this to your partner. That's going yeah. to help you out with this. Yeah. And here you are. Well, right. for the consulting side, I'll say not the same exact thing, but I'll say something pretty similar where I'll say, um, who else is on your team? Who else yeah. is going to help you? Or who, who, who are you working on this with? And they'll say, Ooh. oh, it's this person. Oh, it's that person. Okay, okay, cool. So let's make sure to have that person there on the call. Mm. That way we could all be on the same page. Because also I want to hear from them about their perspective on the business. That I can make sure that um, I, it's even a good fit for you guys. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's perfect, right? Yeah. I mean, that's super smart, especially from like a pure sales side of things. 
right? Again, get everyone who can make the decision in the room yeah. at one time. But you don't want to offend someone. So that's why I always say, like, who's on your team? Who's like, as opposed to like, who's going to make the final decision, <laughs> right? Who's the decision maker? Oh, right, 100%. Yeah. I totally agree with you in not using that framework yeah. or that that vernacular, but yeah. Essentially, that's what you're doing, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Is it a yeah. decision maker? Or is it not a decision maker? Are they just kind of there for support? Or are they actually, do they have weight in the yeah. conversation? That's that's really fun. Um, but for for you guys, I know you guys do some digital marketing, you said, right? For You guys just do Facebook or do you guys do Google? Facebook, Google AdWords. Oh, you do both? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think has mm -hmm. been most fruitful for you in those avenues? Like, have you found that? The Facebook, Instagram side has been more fruitful. The Google side has been more fruitful in terms of like leads. Yeah, I think it it varies over time. Like we'll have a yeah. Facebook ad that goes great and we get a bunch of leads from it. And then for some reason, eventually there's ad fatigue and it yeah. just stops working and I don't know why. And I feel like usually the more direct we are with an ad, as opposed to like silly or cutesy or funny, like mm. is usually not as effective. I was gonna say, what's like the main story that you're telling on your ad? Like how do your ads typically look? Yeah, so usually say like parents of area, insert area, parents mm. of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but you, that's usually, that's really broad, so we wouldn't yeah. do that. We feel, feel Parents of Westchester. Parents of Westchester. Do you want your child to learn confidence and focus and discipline outside of traditional schooling? Uh, uh, in martial arts class, they'll learn how to do blah, 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 blah. Uh, the best way to get started is with our beginner special, which is three lessons in a uniform for $49. Click here to get started. Cool. So very simple to the point, kind of like what they actually want. The thing is, it's hard to determine is like the things, the words that parents actually want change over time by generation. Oh, sure. I don't use the same words. Right. Like, they, they might say the word grit, or we might want to use the word grit, and to them that doesn't really resonate, yeah. right? Or we might want to use discipline, but they want, want to say, like, I want my child to stick with something. Stick to itiveness. Right? Stick to itiveness, <laughs> right? Like, whatever. <laughs> but it's hard to figure out, like, what those exact words change sure. over time, because we've been open since 1994, so my brother started it. Started yeah. it. Um, and you know, I joined in 2013 and like, those are very different parents and you know, the mid nineties, oh, yeah. 2013 and now 2023, you know, 10 years later, people want different things. And yeah. to go back to what I was saying before, because I, I feel like I, I, I glossed over it about like how important pre-framing is, yeah. you know, we'll have students that are three and four years old and they have trouble listening. So if we're going to teach a class for three or four year olds, or we're going to have a private lesson with a three or four year old. In the beginning, we'll, we'll, we'll tell the parents, hey, this, if they don't do everything today, a lot of parents are like frustrated, but that's, you don't need to worry about your child doing everything perfect today. The fact that they're even here right now and not crying, they're already better than 50% of the kids that walk in the store at this age group. So yeah. don't be upset or get frustrated. Uh, we're going to be here. We're going to be patient. Every week, we're going to oh, yeah. work for something a little bit better, a little bit better. And as long as they do that, then then we're doing great. And I think if you have that pre-frame and if you give someone, this is, I think, really important. Someone told me this a while ago. I think my brother taught me this. And I was, I was just on the phone last night with one of our instructors. I said, give the person the quality that you want them to have. So say it out loud. So for instance, I'm talking to a parent and I know the three-year-old like maybe had a bad class and they cried or they're just like kind of all over the place. I say, hey, Johnny's mom, uh, I want you to know that you probably watched the class today. And I know as a parent, it's probably frustrating. Like when you're the, when your child's the one that's kind of, you know, all over the place. But I know that you're not the type of parent that gives up after a, a, tough, 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 uh, a, a tough couple of classes, right? You're the one that kind of like sticks with it because the parents that stick with it, they're the ones that the child get through it. And later they become a success story. Right. The ones that get frustrated and give up, they're the ones that's just like a long list of activities that your child you know, you paid for then kind of fell out of. Yeah. Um, so uh, like, thank you so much for being like patient and and having stick to <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So so your child actually gets what you, what you came here for. That's so smart. Especially again, you know, talking to the parent like that is great. And I'm assuming you can also probably talk to your students like that as they get older, right? And kind of understand that probably, you know, for your 12, 13, 14 year old 
Because you guys go up to what, 17? No, we go, I mean, yeah, we do all the way to adults that are oh, in okay. their 60s I thought and 70s. it was, I don't know why I thought it, it stopped after like 18 or something. Yeah, like most that. of our students are kids, but okay. uh, about 80% kids, 20% adults. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, that's the whole thing of like, hey, listen, I know this hurts, right? But you're the kind of person that sticks through things, right? And thank you for being that person. We're going to take it from you. Like, don't worry about it. We're not offended. We're not worried about it. We just want to make sure that you're okay, yeah. right? Like taking it off of their shoulders. Of like yeah. they don't have to shoulder the embarrassment of their kid freaking out, yeah. right? Or like sticking their finger in someone else's ear or something like that, right? I'm sure which happens all the time. That's that's so smart. I love that. That's, yeah, that's giving someone part. the quality. Yeah, yeah, it's been honestly like that one piece of advice that stuck with me for a long time. I think that when I was like 16 or 17, me and my brother told me. And he was like, you do it with anyone. Like you got to have a conversation with your girlfriend or your wife. And, be, and how you start the conversation is like, hey, like, um, I know we can both have like a level-headed conversation. I know I could be open and honest with you without us getting emotional or or, or yelling. Like, and I, and I love that about us. Is it okay if I talk about a sensitive topic between us? And then it's like, okay, now that's that's amazing. It's also like you got to watch yourself on the, that. You got to be a little careful there. You I, are, I, just, I just laid it on. Yeah, a lot. no, no, no. But I know, I, I know. But like, you you can very easily teeter on gaslighting, right? <laughs> <laughs> and like, that's true. Then people are like. Are you trying to tell me how to act? Like, <laughs> you got to be a little sleuthy with that one. But I'm not saying, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying. No, you're right. It I, is Now that I hear it out loud, <laughs> how I said it to you. Yeah. Well, that's the only, mostly for like, if anyone's listening, right? I'm like, oh, I'm going to go use that. Like, tread softly. Tread softly. Yeah, good point. Right? It's it's an amazing tactic when it's done in the correct way with the correct impetus and like a true like authenticity behind it. However... People don't always respond the way that you want them to, and they have their own baggage and their own history. And so when you give someone a quality, it's like, you're putting something on me right now. Do I have that quality? Yes or no? Do I agree with you? And if I don't agree, watch out. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, that's that's where you kind of have to make sure that you're you're playing to to your audience, if you will. A yeah. Bit. Good point. But – Good not, asterisk. Yeah, right. Just a, a quick little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you're like, oh my God, if I say this to my wife, she'll fucking oops, stab me in the face. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah, if I said that to, to my fiance, she'd, she'd be like, oh, that's nice that you think that I am a certain way when I have my own ideas about who I am. And you're like, what? you are very independent and I love that. About you. <laughs> I could never tell you how to be. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think no. I laid it on pretty heavy. I think you can do it like in a softer tone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Words. I'm just I'm just messing yeah. with you. No, it's all yeah. good. Um, I do have one more question though, yeah. at least around like your your ad side, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, obviously you do both, right? You do the in person stuff, kind of what I'll call like the guerrilla marketing side, the physical yeah. guerrilla marketing side, and then you do the digital marketing side for level of effort, right? And we can define effort as hours spent or dollars spent, really. Are they 50-50? Do you lean one way or the other when you are marketing? In, like, let's just take Westchester, for instance, right? It's a new one for you. Are you spending, like, 50% of your time, like, in the Goddard schools, in the daycares, in, like, the play places of the world, and then 50% in terms of, like, okay, well, we're spending X amount of dollars, which would equate to this amount of my time on digital ads, right? Is it 50-50? Is it 20-30 or 20-80? Or what do you got going on? Yeah, well, I think it depends really on the location. Sure. So for our schools that are more in the city, like where it's dense, they can just run ads and people show up. Or right. those people walk by, but they can run ads that's going to be pretty more effective. And the towns that are a little bit smaller, that word of mouth is going to be way more important than yeah. just like running ads. So in the beginning, like right now, for Westchester, I'll say a brand new location, which um, has a great demographics in terms of like income and it's got a decent density, but it's not like a downtown uh, Philadelphia or downtown New York or something, right? Oh, yeah, like, it's not a metropolis. Yeah, it's not a metropolis. Yeah. Like I care more about in the beginning setting up all those guerrilla relationships of that way they start telling their friends um, because word of mouth is always the number one. I love that you said that because there is something in marketing and there at least that we notice, right, where Population density goes down, word of mouth importance goes up, yeah. right? And then population density goes up, word of mouth importance goes way down. Because it's like, I can't trust all of my neighbors. There's no way. There's like yeah. 2.4 million yeah. of them. 
not all of them are going to be right. Yeah. Right. Especially <laughs> if they give you one bad restaurant recommendation. Never again. Never again. <laughs> You're dead to me. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> My chicken wasn't perfectly cooked. You're dead. Yeah. I'm never going to that burger <laughs> spot. Um, yeah. So I think like really it's, I would say it's like somewhat split, but I think it changes over time. Like in the beginning, I want to get like that word of mouth and be networked in the community. I'd rather go through that like sweat sweat effort. Because mm-hmm. once I said we do it set up once in the beginning and we do a good job, they'll call us and want us to do it every year. You know, we'll just yeah. call them, but hey, this is easy. Let's do it. And I know exactly what that's going to get me. Like I know if, okay, if I go to a, a daycare and there's 80 kids, okay, cool. So I'm going to get um, 80 kids. I'm going to get 40 kids to do this class with me. And now there's 40 kids. 20 kids are going to show up to the ceremony on Saturday. About 40 of those will become members. So, you know, about we'll have eight new students at the end of this. And I know, like, the math on it, right, for the most part. But when it's digital marketing and I'm running an ad, it's like, oh, I hope this ad works, right? Um, And obviously, there's ways to calculate that, of course, too, like ad cost, lead cost. um, But I think that the gorilla side of it or the more, you know, boots on the ground, is this what we're better at? Sure. Um, The digital marketing side, I'm sure, like, we have, like, a a digital marketing agency we use for martial arts schools. Sure. but I feel like that's definitely the side that that needs the most, like, needs the most help, I would say, or most support, or yeah. like, is, 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 has the most weakness. So Yeah, I mean, there's just so many different ways to attack that one thing, right? Like, you've gotten your sales pitch down in person, probably, like, you know, to a script that you could recite with your eyes closed in yeah. your sleep by accident, yeah. right? Like, you have a bad dream and you start repeating your sales pitch, you know? Um What's interesting to me and the reason why I think it is really important to do both regardless is that the guerrilla marketing side, right, you're showing up where they are. The digital marketing side, you're showing up in their, like where they go, sorry. You're showing up where they go on the physical side when you do the guerrilla marketing. You show up where they are at any point on the digital marketing side, right? So you get to follow them around rather than meeting them. Mm. So like it's very important to see it also out of band, which people don't really do. And what I mean by that is different channels. So you see it as a flyer at the Goddard School. You found it on your doorknob and then you also saw it on your Instagram and your Facebook page. And you see it like when you're talking to the other parents in the neighborhood about something else. Oh, actually, Johnny's going to the new action karate that's about to start. Oh, yeah. I saw them at the daycare. I saw them on my doorknob and then I saw it when I was scrolling Instagram yesterday. That's crazy. I guess... I guess they're legit, right? Or, oh, they they must be real or like they must be decent if they're, they're going to show up around my life all this, like right. this many times. Each new channel that you show up in adds another layer of trust hmm. or opportunity to build trust, really, if you're good at it, right? A bad ad is bad ad is bad ad is bad ad. But if you can do it in a way that you know works, which obviously you've had a tried and true method to date right, where you're opening up new schools and doing your whole thing, like showing up in multiple places in someone's life is the best way to do it, Mm. right? That's what Nike does. That's what all the big brands do, right? That's why they sponsor events. You're, one, borrowing trust from the brand that you're partnering with. So like you're borrowing trust from the Goddard School, right? They've spent millions of dollars building their brand into being like the best daycare and a trusted place now who's attached to that, right? You are, right, by having that that recommendation. You do the same thing when you go to, again, whatever, the children's clothing store that's, especially if it's local, right, and it's curated by someone who's part of the community. Hey, you build trust with that one person. The community's already built trust with them. They exist. They've been in the market. You're now borrowing a little bit of their trust too. Yeah. So you're just building and borrowing all this trust, and then you're also building your own through your own ads, right, through Instagram and Facebook. So that way your awareness goes up, your trust goes up, and the more times you can make that pivot or that that new channel, right, or show up in a different spot in someone's life, the more effective that your ads are going to be. As long as, and here's the other big part that people don't really understand, the branding is the same and the tone is the same and on point, right? So that's like the messaging on your website and the colors match the messaging on your Instagram and the colors and the flyers and every other communication that you build because that's another big thing that we see people don't 
care. Uh, we're terrible at that. I can tell you right now. There's no way our Instagram colors match our website colors, which match the it's just cool colors. Brand standards, yeah. right? Is is what this is, right? It's how do you are you using the same terminology to your point earlier, right? We're not using discipline. We're using stick to itiveness now, right? Are we making sure that we're con- keeping consistent with that? We're now like our colors are black and white. And do you have a accent color red or? Yeah, red. I, I know it's black and white mostly. Yeah, right? man, mainly black and white, but also we have like some red in there, which I think we're trying to move uh, away, away from. from. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And do more like this, like it's almost like a blue. I don't know what type of blue it is, but. But keeping those consistent, right? Because yeah. that way when you do any story on your Instagram, you're using the same font that you've decided on, right? So that way when people are scrolling through their stories and you pop up, it's always consistent, right? And that way when they go see your flyer, it's the same text font that's on your website, mm. right? We definitely do that all poorly. Everything so that you, you <laughs> it builds like this ecosystem of your brand. So that way you don't have to put your name front and center on everything. It feels like your brand before they find it. Mm. right before you look up to the top left on your instagram you already know who it's from yeah like i know when you mention that i think like okay i know what the nike font looks like right even if it doesn't say the word nike you have a swoosh like 100 oh, that certain i don't know or, how to like, describe it. i mean you're a guy of our age right marine layer shows ads all the time right or um not jack threads that's from yesteryear uh taylor stitch i don't know if you're okay if you I know that ads yeah they use the same photo filters on all of their content. So that way when I see a photo of pants that I probably like because they are they hit my niche and what I enjoy very much in terms of like what I like to wear. But I know it's them because of the way that the photo is edited. Before mm-hmm. I even look at the top left to see it, I, the font's always the same of like 20% off or the new whatever pant before it gives me the brand name. I already know it's them because it's the same font, mm-hmm. same photo style. And then they use the same tone in their captions every time, Mm. right? So they're educating you on their brand. So that way they don't have to shove their name in your face anymore. You're being conditioned to understand what that is and build trust with that whole ecosystem. So when you're on your site, you feel more comfortable. So when you see an ad for them on a bus terminal or something like that, you're like, oh yeah, I recognize that. That's gotta be Taylor's. And then it's like down at the bottom, right? Nike does this all the time. Right. All Adidas does this really well. They all so that's another big thing is just consistency. It also helps like put more content out there because you have standards that you can adhere to, which takes some of the guesswork out of like mm. making the decision again. Okay, we wanted to say this. Okay, so what 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 color are we gonna make the flyer then? No, we have brand standards for that, right? What color should the title be? Should we make the title this font or this size? And then like should the body text be something else or what? It's already made up, right? You make the decision once and then you don't have to remake it again over and over and over again. So it takes less time, less effort, but also feels better to the end user, right? Your target market that you're reaching. Mm. So I would highly recommend kind of going in that direction a little bit. Make those brand standards known. Disseminate them, whoever's creating your content. Because then especially on the ad side, if you're using an agency, they should be adhering to the same thing every single time because then it builds on the dollars that you've already spent, right? You don't, you're not just starting from scratch of like, we're going to take a pastel approach to this one, right? Like <laughs> yeah. probably not going to work for your demographic either way, but like without brand standards, who's to say that they're not going to try? Right. Obviously they won't if they're good at their job, but you get my point. Right. Yeah, I think that's awesome. So yeah, you had me thinking about especially the words that we use and the font because mm-hmm. i feel like a lot of or honestly i'll just make a flyer whatever canva yeah. template there is and be like yeah this one looks kind of cool as long as it has their logo on it, i feel like it's fine but it does, definitely doesn't match the colors of the website or the, what it looks like the interior of the school so thank you for thank that's you for the trust that. part that i was talking to you about right understanding without fear right so okay, I expect this. If I go somewhere else and it doesn't meet that expectation, you're setting expectations, you're framing them to expect this font, this color, this type of tone. And then they go to the website and it is not that, Mm. right? Immediate minor break of trust. They don't even think about it, but it's happening Mm. because it doesn't meet their expectations because they're setting one expectation based on what 
information they've been given. This is all unconscious. All unconscious. But it very much, like, it's one of those things where, like, it feels weird. Like, I don't know why. It just feels broken or it feels off. Why does this feel off, right? That's usually what it is. It's like these minor little design things. That's why, like, UX and UI design are huge these days. And, like, UX designers get paid a ton of money. What is that? I don't know what that is. Uh, UX and UI, it's user experience or user interface. Uh, it's was big in, like, the computer world. So, like, when you're designing any type of program, where the buttons are, how they work, if right. it's a drop down, if it's not, right? That's all user experience or user interface. But the same thing can be said for your brand, right? They're interfacing with your brand all the time, or at least you want them to be. And you want to make sure that every interaction, every experience that they have with your brand is consistent. It just builds trust over and over and over again. Because if you aren't consistent in your own branding and marketing and effort on your business, how can they expect you to be consistent on the product that you're delivering to them, mm. right? That's the biggest thing. If you can't prove that you're consistent, it's the one thing service businesses need to be. It's consistent. That's what makes billion dollar companies. They just do stuff really well all the time. And they do that through standards, right? Standards of practice, standard operating procedure, what have you. Same thing happens with your brand. It's the most visual portion of your whole company. Making it consistent is just the first, like the gateway into building trust with folks. So that's why, you know, when I work with our clients, we're not technically a branding agency, right? We mostly do like operations and tooling and stuff like that. And we do content creation and things like that. But we end up becoming a branding consultancy for a lot of our clients because they need it, right? And they don't have the extra $5,000 for a branding agency to come in and like give them a letterhead, give them all their all their fonts and all their colors and what have you. So like we'll help them do that um, and not charge them $5,000. But only because if we don't do it, no matter what we do, our effort is going to be severely diminished in terms of its output. If it's, oh, we don't really have a brand, right? Well, then what are they building trust towards? The brand is your business's representation of itself minus the founder. Right. So like you can use your brand to give your company value, but eventually if you ever want to leave, you have to transfer that trust that you have in your personal brand to your brand or your company. To do that, it needs to be consistent. So that way you show up at the, the same time. Right. You put them next to each other. It's like uh, influencer marketing. Right. You're borrowing trust from an influencer. They've built trust in their market with their following. You're now paying them to take a little bit of that, right? And use it for your own benefit. And then that translates into validity and value to your brand because people are now attaching the trust that they feel for one person and now attaching it to a logo or a symbol. It happens all the time. Mm. But that's why it's so important to be consistent because if you do that with one thing and then it actually shows up kind of different in another spot, right? the trust is diminished because that's not what they actually built trust with. It was this version of the logo with this feeling, or this influencer or this person. And now it's something completely different. That's why like what X is doing and Twitter and that whole thing. And like the usage of Twitter has gone down significantly since they changed the whole branding of it is people loved Twitter, right? They liked the functionality. Sure. But they liked the feeling of, they felt, comfortable in Twitter. X is now something else, right? They didn't do a very good job of like handing off that trust long enough, I don't think, in my personal opinion, to get there. But that's just an example of why it's so important to maintain your brand. So even if you just have, because a lot of the things you're talking about are concepts for big businesses, but you think of oh, small businesses as well, like a martial arts school or salon, even and for them. More important. More important. More important because you don't have millions of dollars to brute force trust, right? You have to make every single dollar count as much as it can. So you have to do all the little things really right so that you're getting the most value out of every dollar. So if you're going to spend money, do it in a consistent way where your brand is consistently represented, right? If you're going to put in the effort, make sure that you're doing it so that 
there's so much or there's so little trust lost in that transference, mm -hmm. right? You want highly efficient because you're small. Everything's got to be so efficient. And that's one of the easiest ways to do it is making sure that you're consistent. Cool. Peace of mind. Thank you so much for being on here. That yeah, was amazing. Man. I know that a lot of small business owners are really going to uh, find this valuable. I found it extremely valuable for myself just listening Good. to you. So I'm going to have a, a chat with the team tomorrow and, talk, and look at our website and look at our Facebook pages <laughs> and be like, this is, I already know it's not going to be consistent, but I'm, uh, honestly, I'm a little nervous to look at it to see how bad it is, but obviously it's important. You got to do it. It's a medicine, man. You got to take it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I appreciate you uh, force delivering that medicine yeah. today. Hey, anytime, anytime. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I really my appreciate pleasure. It. So if someone wants to reach out to you, they have a question about branding or maybe they interested in Bowtie Social uh, marketing, how do they find you? Yep. So our website is bowtie.social. That's it. No.com. B O W T I E dot social. That's it. You can find us there. Our contact forms on there. Or if you want to reach out to me directly, it's Stephen with a P H S T E P H E N at bowtie.social. And, uh, we can get you all set up cool. or at least I'm more than happy to, to at least, you know, you can pick my brain and I'm happy to guide folks for free. That's, it's my passion. So if I'm <laughs> helping people progress, I feel good. Cool. Awesome. Thanks Steve for being on here. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers.